you taste an oyster, to me, it's just a mirror of the ocean. You're looking to pick up the tones of the brine of the sea, and it's really just meant to be a little snapshot of the freshest ocean smell and sea air. And, um, and you get that with these. And a lot of that, I have to believe, is a product of the environment. I'm Darren, I'm the chef at the Fairmont Pacific Rim. And we want to talk today a little bit about another great person we deal with. It's uh, Stephen Pocock at Sawmill Bay Shellfish. I think here, like this little area, from my experience is ideal. Because it goes down deep, it's steep, like we've probably got 100 feet under us here. And Sawmill Bay is one that's pretty close to heart. I I've known Stephen, Stephen Pocock, the owner, since he started up pretty much a few years ago. I think one of the things that really struck us about Stephen is here's a guy who cares so much about his oysters that with no recognition and no credit for it, he's personally maintaining and making sure that nobody can put out a bad oyster. For us, that was a major selling point for our product. And it's something that's it's uniquely designed. There's, there's a series of 10 or 12 tubs on the outskirts and a central channel and a big old paddle wheel. And what's going on is that uh, the only access to water in the tubs is through screens in the bottom of the tubs that hold the oysters. And this paddle's pulling a vacuum and it's drawing all the water up through the bottom of the screens through the tiny oysters and dumping into a central reservoir. And what it's doing, it's creating a constant rolling and tumbling motion. So these little tiny seeds and tiny oysters are never still. And another key point is really deep water. You know, we're sitting in this little bay and it doesn't look like much, but it turns out it's over 100 feet deep. The, the way he picks his lease and where it's going to be and how deep the bay is and what the environment is and how far away it is from civilization, this is really how he creates his own meroir. And uh, for a British guy to throw on a French phrase like that, I was pretty impressed. Ultimately, these guys go out on the rafts in, in the horrible weather and they haul up these, uh, the racks of trays, there's I think eight or ten racks, and uh, they're clearly heavy and they come out and they've got a huge tumbler. It looks like the guts out of a washing machine or it looks like a, a massive version of a lottery ball. And it's, it's just spinning them and it's just gravity fed, but it smashes off all the little particles and all the little frills of, of shell that are not serving a purpose. And uh, in essence, what it's doing is making sure that none of the nutrients go to a dead end. The oyster's not spending any energy on a little bit of shell that isn't protecting the meat. For us, one of the key factors is going to be how fresh we can get these oysters. The fact that we can make a call and have them here 24 hours later, knowing they were coming out of the water 24 hours ago, that's a hard mark to hit. And uh, now, when we're talking about oysters around here, we don't talk about oysters, we talk about Steve's oysters. There's just a, there's a better respect for the product when you see where it's coming from. And um, we really wanna make an effort to get this out for everyone else to see. And it's really nice for the customer and for everyone out there to go all the way through and kind of make it identify with, uh, with who's providing this for them.